Glad to see everybody here. All right, and uh, before we turn over and start here, uh, is there any prayer requests that you all have that you'd like to share? Okay, uh, let's remember that. All right, anyone? anyone yes, Miss Willie. Okay, well, let's remember those two things. Anyone else? We have a great granddaughter who's in hospital in Ohio. Uh, they're not sure what's wrong. If they can get her to get to the just pray for her. She's on the street. Okay, yeah, let's, let's remember that. All right, anyone else? All right, I'll go ahead and uh, open us here in a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for bringing us together here this morning. Uh, God, we thank you so much for, the, for everything that you've given us and allowing us to uh, arrive here safely and be together here in fellowship. Uh, Lord, we ask that uh, you be with these uh, requests that have been made here this morning, Lord. And Lord, we know that there are several uh, others that may be unspoken, Lord. And God, we just pray that you would be with... Uh, you know, those are still uh, you know, battling COVID or uh, you know, that have been sick from COVID or that uh, you know, are, are health care workers and first responders, Lord. And God, we just pray that you would be with this, uh, with our nation, Lord, as you know, we're, we're continuing to deal with uh, you know, the, the, the many things that we have to uh, work through with uh, you know, COVID itself and the things that have been caused by COVID, Lord. And uh, God, we just ask that you would be with our leaders and uh, you know, help them make the the, you know, the best decisions for our country and, and guide us, Lord. And uh, God, we ask that you would be with this uh, Sunday school service, Lord. I ask that you would be with the uh, other Sunday school teachers, Lord. And I ask that you would be with myself and that you would just uh, you know, guide and direct me through this lesson, Lord, that uh, you would help me to pull out the things that we need to uh, talk about and just uh, you know, expand on those and talk about your goodness and mercy, Lord, so that uh, we can bring praise to you. Amen. All right, well, let's uh, turn over into uh, Genesis here, and let's look at uh, Genesis uh, chapter 13, and we'll, we'll start in, uh, in verse 5, and we'll look through uh, verses 5 and 7. So we're, we're going to look, and our focus is going to be the differences between you know, Abraham and, uh, and Lot. And you know, we don't have a you know a whole lot of information about you know Lot here beforehand, but we we know that uh, you know, he he traveled with Abraham, and that he seems to uh, you know, though Abraham and Sarah had had no children at this time, it you know it seems that uh, you know Abraham or Abraham would have been you know caring for Lot and helping to uh, you know sh show him uh, you know the ways of God and help him to. Uh, you know, to mature and nourish, or, you know, mature and nourish him, and you know, at, the, at this point, uh, you know, it comes where you know Lot needs to take out uh, on his own. So let's uh, you know look at the differences between the, these two men here. So let's look at uh, uh, verses five through seven. And it says, uh, and Lot also, which went with Abraham, had flocks and herds and tents, and the land was not able to bear bear them that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of, of Abraham's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle, and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled then, then in the land. All right, so, uh, you know, we have Abraham and Lot here together, and they've been so blessed by the Lord that uh, their, their herds and cattle, like, they're, they're, they're crowding against each other, and uh, and uh, the fact that they don't have this, you know, space, you know, they're 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 going to be, uh, you know, a Abraham sees that, you know, we're, we're they're going to need to separate separate, and uh, you know, as as we go through, and uh, you know, read further, we'll see that uh, you know Abraham is going to you know represent that, you know, that that spiritual man, you know, those that someone that's focused on the Lord and, and wants to continue to be with the Lord and, and please the Lord. And then, uh, you know, Lot's going to be the more spiritual man. You know, he's a, he's a carnal believer, you know, as we, as we go on. And uh, 
and look through these things. And, and we notice that the, them uh, you know, living together and, and, and being with each other, being on top of each other, causes a lot of strife and, and division between the two. Between the two. Uh, you know, I know, and I'm sure that uh, you know many of you all can re that we all can relate to that. You know, especially when we had those, you know, that lockdown, uh, you know, back when the, the this pandemic first started, and you, you got to spend a whole lot of time with your family, and uh, you know, eventually it gets to the point where you're like, I, I need some space. You know, as much as you you you, you, you love your wife and children, there there comes a point when you're like, I, I I need a little bit of I need a little bit of I need a little bit of time, and so. Uh, you know, we, 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 we see that between, you know, Abraham and Lot here. And, uh, you know, Abraham, as, as we look at these, you know, next, the, this next part here, you know, he sees that strife and, uh, you know, he, he notices wisely of what, what that can cause. Let's look at uh, Proverbs uh, 17 and verse 14 here for a moment. It says that uh, the beginning of strife is as one letteth out water, Therefore, leave off contention before it be meddled with. And so, you know, it says there that, you know, that little bit of strife can cause, you know, big divisions, you know, big, big issues. It, uh, you know, I, I remember talking with, uh, with my children, you know, like they're going through history and they're learning about the wars. And so, uh, you know, they, they talked about World War I, which is something that's just, it, it just took like one little action to get everybody involved in this great big war, you know, it, and how it all started was you know, Austria's Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Uh, he was assassinated by a Serbian national, and so w with that happening, then you know they they blame Russia, and with that, you know, they didn't want to go in by themselves. So the next thing they do is you know, they go to their allies and they bring in Germany, and then when Germany's brought in, you know, they they begin the war, and then you know everybody else's allies you know, fall in fighting together along those those little things there. And you, and you notice that because of that, like these big, big cracks continue to happen in Europe, you know, which actually leads to the Second World War. So it just takes that, that one little small event, you know, that, uh, you know, in the whole world stage, you know, he wasn't very important, but that one little small event brings everybody into this great big battle and contention that, uh, you know, went, went on and, uh, you know, ca caused uh, trouble in Europe for years, for many years. So, uh, Abraham sees that, and let's uh, look at verses you know, eight through thirteen. Uh, you know how he, the, as the spiritual man, sees how to deal with this. And Abraham said to Lot, unto Lot, "Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me." If that will take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or, if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord, destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from uh, the other. And Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in, in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. All right, so you know, we see that uh, you know, Abraham sees that there's this contention between them, that they're, they're, they're fighting amongst themselves, and so, so he needs that sees that they need to stop fighting. You know, he 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 knows that uh, you know everyone around them is going to see that they're are going to think that they're weak and want to attack them because they're fighting amongst themselves. And so, you know, he he's you know, being uh, as you know being a man of God. You know, he doesn't want uh, you know that fighting between them to, for them to be attacked or or captured. And you know that that would. Uh, Besmirch the name of God, and so uh, you know, he sees that, and then he relies you know, on God Himself. You know, he, he, like this next portion, we see his maturity. You know, he he doesn't choose the land first. Instead, he knows that God's going to take care of him, so he allows Lot to look out and, and choose the land that he's going to choose. And so you know, and we see in in juxtaposition to that, we see that uh, you know Lot and sees things through worldly eyes so so you know we see Abraham is going to let God take care of it let 
let Lot choose, but Lot goes and the first thing he does is he, he looks with his eyes. So he, he looks out with his eyes and he sees the plain of Jordan and, and it looks good. You know, so he has that, you know, that little bit of temptation there. And then, you know, with that pride, he sees all these, all these wonderful cities. And I'm sure that he looks at that, at that plain and he says, you know, that would be a great place for me to, to be in. You know, he, he sees how fertile it is. And so, you know, the first thing he does is he, is he takes and he looks out and, and he chooses the worldly side. You know, he sees all these worldly things that are out here before him and that's what he chooses. Uh, and we see that uh, you know, Abraham you know, dwells, you know, as he promised, in the land of Canaan, you know, across from uh, where uh, you know, Lot had, had chosen and had you know, let himself be uh, you know, taken away. And then we see that uh, once Lot you know, lives there, that he, he decides to uh, you know, take and, and pitch toward or you know, he, he, he spreads out as far as Sodom. And the problem with Sodom is in, in 13, where it talks about, you know, the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners ex before the Lord exceedingly. So, you know, he, he goes out and he goes to the, this worldly place. And I'm sure it, it didn't start out that he, he, he started out toward Sodom. I'm sure just a little bit of a time, he got, he got a little closer and a little closer and a little closer because he saw how, how, nice, it, how, how nice Sodom looked on the outside and thought it would be, oh, look, at, look how rich and how nice Sodom is. Let's just keep inching away, and you know he keeps going further and further away from Abraham and the Lord, and more towards Sodom and and the sin of Sodom. All right, so uh, let's look at uh, let's continue looking at uh, thirteen through uh, through eighteen here. So let's look at uh, fourteen, or let's look at fourteen through uh, seventeen next. All right, <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Abraham. After that Lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee I will give, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. So if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed be also be numbered. Arise and walk through the land and the length of it and the breadth of it, for I will gi for I will give it unto thee. So uh, you know we we see that the Lord comes to uh, Abraham. He, he comes to him after after Lot's left. So you know once he uh, you know doesn't he's not dealing with that contention from Lot and you know Lot that uh, your worldly person has has come away from him that you know the Lord comes to him and. Uh, he, here he is, and he's going to be you know, somewhere between the mountains of uh, Ai and Bethel. So he's on one of these mountaintops somewhere in Canaan. And uh, you know, the Lord lets him know that he can look out on all the land of Canaan. That, you know, that, and, he, and he immediately there you know, gives him that promise that all of the land that he sees, that he's going to give to him, you know, to him and his seed forever. And then, you know, again, he, him and Sarah haven't even had children at this point, but he lets them know that his, his seeds or his descendants will be as the dust of the earth. There'll be so many that, uh, you know, that, that they can't be numbered, uh, is what he's saying there. You know, if any man can number the dust of the earth, then they, you know, that's, that's how many of your descendants there will be. And so, you know, he, he gives him and he asks him to arise and walk and, and look through the land. And so, you know, with, with this promise and... You know, with these uh, promises here of the land and, and how large his, uh, his descendants and family are, are going to be. You know, Abraham, uh, let's, let's look at a verse 18. And let's see his response to this. So then Abraham removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of uh, Mamre, which is uh, in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. Uh, so the first thing he does is he takes down his tent and he goes and and he builds an altar to the Lord. You know, he's going to worship the Lord because of what the Lord's given him. He's going to show his thanks and thanksgiving for, for, uh, for these promises that, that he's given. So, you know, whereas, you know, Lot there, you know, spread out and was, you know, going further and further away from the Lord and toward those sinners, we see that, uh, you know, that Abraham trusts the Lord and he, he gets blessed by the Lord and he just grows closer to the Lord uh, you know, through his experience. All right, so let's look at, uh, 
on to chapter 14, and uh, let's look at these uh, first 11 verses here. So here they, uh, you know, they split out, and they're, they're going to end up being involved in some conflict here with some of these kings that are around them. Right. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, the king of Shinra, and Erak, king of Elisar, Ketelomer, the king of Elmar, and Tidal, the king of nations, Tidal, the king of yeah, Tidal, the king of nations, that these men made war with Barah, the king of Sodom, and with uh, Bersha, the king of Gomorrah, Shinab, the king of Adma, and Shimber, the king of Zeboim, and the king of uh, Bela, which is uh, Zoar. All these were joined together in the vale of uh, Sodom, uh, which is the Salt Sea. Twelve years they uh, served uh, Keladamar. In the thirteenth year they rebelled. And in the fourteenth uh, year came uh, of Keladamar and the kings that were with him and smote the Rephims and the Ashitoroth. Karanarimar and the uh, Zuzims in Ham and the uh, Enums in uh, Shave and Kiranathiam and the uh, and the Horats in their mount Sirah and the uh, and unto El uh, Elperim which is the wilderness and they returned and came to in Mish uh, Pat, which is Kadesh, and smote all the country of the Amalekites and the Amorites that dwelt in uh, Hazer, Hazi, sorry, Hazi Zotamar, and uh, there went out the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah and the king of Adma and the king of Zeboim and the king of uh, Bela, the saint the same as Zoar, and they joined the battle within the vale of the king, uh, within the vale of Siddim, and Keladamar, the king of Elam, and with Tidal, the king of nations, and with uh, Amraphel, the king of Shinar, and with uh, er Eroic, the king of El Sahar, four kings with five, and the vale of uh, Siddim was full of slime pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there, and they, remain, uh, and they that the remained fled into the mountain. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and their victuals, and they, and they went their way. All right, so, uh, you know, here we have these, these kings and this uh, uh, Kettle of Demar, he's, he's a conqueror. He's like the... Uh, yeah, in the book, it compared him to, to like the Napoleon at the time. You know, like he wanted to take over, you know, all of the all of the land, you know, there in that in Mesopotamia in that area. And so uh, he targeted Sodom and Gomorrah uh, because they're they're along two trade routes. So you know, there's a there's a trade route that will go from uh, from Sodom and Gomorrah to Damascus, and there's another trade route that came through there as well. So they were you know very very rich, very well to do off cities. And so, um, you know, that, that, that was part of the reason why that, that they were the targets. Uh, so, you know, in this large area that, uh, that, that he had, um, and they served and, give him tri and, and gave him tribute for 12 years. But in the 13th year, you know, here were Sodom and Gomorrah decided that, uh, you know, they're, they're so big and they're so rich that these cities that they're not going to pay them this tribute anymore. You know, they're going to they're gonna take care of themselves, basically. And so when, when they rebelled and refused to uh, pay him, then he gets together with uh, four kings and uh, you know, his, his alliances, and they come against Sodom and Gomorrah, and there are five kings and their alliances. And so that's where it talks about the, uh, the four kings with five. And so, you know, they go down and they're and he has such a powerful army that he, he overtakes them even though they're outnumbered with, the, with, with these nations. 
And uh, you know they, they fought in this valley, and in this valley where it talks about these uh, slime pits, it's actually would be like oil or asphalt, asphalt. It's basically tar, and so it was not a good place to fight either. So many of them were were stuck in this tar, and then uh, those that weren't, uh, you know, from Sodom and Gomorrah, they ran and fled, and they, they hid in the mountains. Uh, so you know they were, you know, they they took against them and st stood against them, and they. Were, were conquered and, 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 dr and driven out. And then, uh, you know, here we see in these next verses that, you know, Lot was somehow involved. You know, was he involved with, uh, you know, perhaps trying to defend Sodom and Gomorrah, or was he just involved because he was there? You know, he, was, he was pretty close to Sodom and Gomorrah, so it's, it's uh, you know, it doesn't say, but it's hard to tell. But he, he ends up being involved in this. So let's look at uh, these uh, next verses. Uh, 12 through uh, 16 here. All right, and they took Lot, Abraham's brother, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. And there came one that had escaped and told a Abraham the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of uh, Mamre with the Amorite brother of uh, Iskal and his brother uh, Anir, and these were confederate with Abraham. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants by night, and smote them, and pursued them into Hobath, uh, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also uh, brought again his brother Lot, and his goods, and the women also, and the people. And so, uh, you know, we, we, we see here that for, you know, for whatever reason, you know, Lot's taken along with, uh, with his goods. You know, he was, he was really close to Sodom, and in being close to Sodom, you know, he, he gets involved in this and has to pay the price. So he's, he's captured. And we see that uh, Abraham, you know, hears this, and being a, you know, being a godly man, seeing that, you know, Lot is, you know, part of his family, you know, also, uh, you know, had been, serving God in the past that he, he's going to come out and he's going to, to you know to rescue him you know he's going to go out and, and redeem him here and so uh, it's it's not anything out of vengeance or anything like that you know he's he's going to follow what God wants him to do and and, and come and get his his brother out of out of captivity and so he uh, you know he arms and trains you know, his servants of his family and takes 318 of them and uh, and, and goes and and uh, and attacks them and overtakes them and he and he frees Lot. You know he, he takes back Lot and he br brings back Lot's goods, and uh, you know all the people there with uh, with with Lot. And uh, you know he makes sure that get that he that Lot has everything that uh, that he'd had before. And so uh, you know with, with this you know rescuing of uh, Lot, you know he he impresses. Uh, you know the king of Sodom and uh, and another king and let's uh, let's read these uh, next verses and and uh, talk about it. Let's look through uh, like at seventeen through through twenty here. All right, and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of uh, or the defeat of uh, Ketelamir and the uh, and the kings that were with him at the valley of Shava. Uh, which is the king's dale, and Mezekeldek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies unto, thine ha unto thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. So uh, we see that, you know, first the king of Sodom is you know, very impressed. He runs out to, uh, you know, he, he, he comes out to meet him. But first, you know, he's, he's met by uh, this first king, the Mezekildic. And, and you notice that he's both king and priest. And so we have this, you know, pointing toward Christ. You know, just, just like Christ is, you know, both king and, uh, and priest, uh, you, know, this, uh, uh, you know, this historical figure is, 
you know, like again, you know, pointing toward Christ. So this you know, happened in history, but we're also pointing toward Christ and the redemption and Calvary that's coming. And we and we notice that uh, he brings forth that uh, you know this this king priest uh, Mezekildic is the king of Salem, and you know Salem is uh, you know, translated in Hebrew would, would be peace. And so you know he this king of peace, and we see that uh, he also brings bread and wine. You know, representing the the body of Christ and and uh, and the blood of Christ. So you know we're we're pointing all these things that uh, you know toward Calvary and the things that will be uh, you know coming here in the in the future. Uh, in, in fact, while we're while we're talking about this, uh, you know I think that uh, you know that the New Testament can can explain this much better than I can. Let's uh, look at uh, Hebrews and chapter seven, and let's look at verses uh, one through seven. And, it's, and it uh, reads, uh, For this Mezekeldek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of his spoils. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take these tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that, that had the promises. And without all the contradiction, the less is blessed of the better or, or, or of beyond. And so, you know, again, we see that, you know, this is, this is pointing toward Christ and it's pointing toward, uh, you know, even the uh, you know, taking of the you know, tithes that they will take you know, as they uh, toward for God as they you know, go forward in in the uh, you know, it, with the law and and so uh, you know we see that you know this this blessing that uh, that Abraham had received uh, you know from this king that you know he gives him a tenth of the uh, of the spoil you know everything is is pointing toward you know God and 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 his and his redemption and we see you know Abraham uh, having this you know loving response back to it and you know he he shows this the you know through his tithes and then uh, let's look at uh, these last verses and we see the king of Sodom Sodom you know, this and this worldly king and uh, his response to that. And it says, uh, And the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abraham said unto the king of Sodom, I have lift up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from, from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou should sayest, I have made Abraham rich. Save only which that the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men uh, which with me, uh, Anir, Eschol, and Ma Mamre, let them take their portion. And so <clears throat> we see uh, the king of Sodom comes out and he immediately uh, starts and uh, tempting Abraham. And he tempts him with, you know, all these things of uh, all these riches of the world. You know, he says that, uh, you know, he can, he can just, you know, I'll, I'll take the people and you can take all these goods of Sodom to yourself, uh, you know, for, for, saving these, uh, for saving these people. You know, and Abraham sees that and he vows a vow. Uh, this next portion is where he says, I've lifted up my hand unto the Lord. He vows a, a vow to the Lord that he's not going to take these things. Because you know he does, he wants to honor God. You know he, he doesn't. He wants to show everybody that it's God that's done these wonderful things for him, and not uh, things of of this world or people of this world. 
And so he uh, vows that he's not going to take anything, not even a thread to a, to a shoe latchet, nothing at all from the king of Sodom. He doesn't want any of, the, any of those uh, you know, wicked worldly things that uh, the king of Sodom has. And the, and the biggest reason why is that he knows that if he takes those things, that the, that king of Sodom's going to say, well, I've made him rich. Abraham's rich because I've made him rich. I've given him all these things. And so he's going to take, he knows that he's going to take glory from God if he ends up taking these things from the king of Sodom. And so he, uh, he swears to God that he's not going to take these things and he, he refuses those things. He, he doesn't give in to that temptation. And then we also see that you know, Abraham cares for uh, you know, other people as well. You know, we see his maturity here. Uh, you know, he's not going to take any of those things for himself, but he knows that these men that are with him are, are going to need, need what, uh, you know, have, have needs and are, are going to need some of these things. So he says that he's, he's only going to take those, the, that which the young men have eaten and, uh, and the portion for, for those that went with me. You know, all, all these people that uh, were confederate with him, he wants to make sure that, that they're taken care of. So, you know, he's not going to take anything for himself, but he's going to make sure that, that they're cared for and taken care of. And uh, so we see that it, we see so much you know, maturity here with, with how he's uh, you know, caring for, for his people uh, and you know, really you know, getting, getting closer to God and praising God for that. You know, he's, he's not taking those wicked things, and, but he is making sure that uh, the that everyone is, is taken care of and you know, showing the, the love of God through that. And so, uh, you know, I, I, hope these, uh, I hope these things like really you know, help you this week and, uh, you know, help you, uh, you know, lead, lead away from temptation that, we, you know, we can be like Abraham, that, you know, it doesn't matter who's, who's in front of us or, you know, who's, who's looking to offer all these uh, worldly things that, you know, we can resist those because, you know, our, our God's so much better than, than anything that, you know, the world can offer us. You know, the, you know our, our Lord's going to take care of us and take us through these things. You know, we see Abraham saw that, uh, you know, he'd taken care of him from, you know, from, from well back. You know, he... You know, he, he remembers that you know, God had taken care of him when he had the, all, all these things and that may have had the strife between him and Lot, but God gave him all that. You know, he, he sees and trusts in God to uh, allow Lot to choose between the two places. And, and through that, you know, the Lord blesses him and promises him that, that he will have all this land and, and that he will have these, uh, these many descendants. And so he knows that God is, is going to take care of him through all that. And, and through that, he, he's, he's, gained, he's gotten strength and he's gotten really close to God. And so that when he's, uh, you know, tempted through, from this from this powerful rich king that he doesn't have to take those things because he knows that his he knows that his god is going to continue to provide for him and uh, so i hope we can take that uh, through us through this week and i'll go ahead and close us out here in a word of prayer uh lord we thank you so much here for uh bringing us together uh, god we thank you so much for allowing us to really you know dig in and and look through your word lord that you know, we're, we're able to take these many lessons from Abraham, Lord, and uh, God, we just pray that we're able to uh, keep remembering the blessings and the things that, that you've given unto us so that we can you know, be strengthened and, and, and get closer to you, Lord, and that, uh, you know, we wouldn't be able to, that we would not fall into, uh, you know, temptation, Lord, as, as, as Lot did. And, uh, Lord, we, continue, we ask that you continue to allow us to grow closer and, and to uh, you know, help us not to come into those temptations, Lord, and God, I ask that you would be with the uh, other Sunday school teachers, Lord, as they wrap up their lessons, that you would bless them and allow them to uh, you know, finish their, their teaching and, and finish the, and helping their, with their classes as well, that you know, they, they would be lifted up and, and learn more about you and be brought closer to you, Lord. And God, I pray that you would be with us uh, through this, you know, our service coming up, Lord, that you, know, you would be with everyone uh, that's going to be involved in it, Lord, that you, know, you would be with our, our, our deacons, our, our pastor, Lord, that uh, you would be with him and God and direct him, Lord. And God, we ask that you be with uh, our choir director and our choir, Lord, as we you know, also lift up our voices to uh, sing to you and praise you, Lord, and that uh, you would just... Uh, and you'll be in the midst of us here and just pour out your spirit so that we can have a good spirit to uh, worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.